Welcome to the presentation that the security for permutation based to equal correlation robust hashing. I am the speaker Yu Long Chen, and this paper was co-authored with Stefano Besaro. Secure multi-party computation is one of the hottest topic in cryptography currently. Protocols such as OT extension schemes and Galbert circuit actually make heavy use of symmetric key printers. A common denominator that is used in those protocols is a special form of hash functions. This type of hash functions is often modeled as a random oracle and is usually used to hash 128 bit strings. Therefore, a SHA 3 hash function is not really a right solution for this problem since SHA 3 has a too large state size, which will lead to low performance. Currently, constructions based on fixed key AES are used to improve the performance. However, the problem is that many of the existing protocols just use inefficient or sometimes even insecure hash functions. The fact that several motions are needed for different protocols, we need to design different constructions in order to satisfy the stronger version of the notions. Before I continue with the solution for this problem, I first want to explain why designing this type of hash functions is hard. Keep in mind that what we want here is something that's called correlation robustness, but that means I'm going to explain it in the next slide. So we are dealing with a hash function here. That means there is no designated secret key input. The only randomness R is actually XOR with the message input, and there's nothing we can change about. That means we cannot just obtain this type of hash functions by, for example, using a Twiggle block cipher. This problem is, however, related to the related key security for XOR. As promised before, in this slide, I'm going to explain correlation robustness security notion. In order to do that, I first need to define an attack game. So at the beginning of the game, one of the two worlds is chosen. The real world on the left side and the ideal world on the right side. The adversary A is getting query access to the construction queries. So A is allowed to make Q construction queries. Where the construction, query, uh, the construction oracle in the real world uses a randomness r and is defined by the hash function h. So we can see that this hash function takes as input w x or the randomness r. Well, in the ideal world, the construction oracle is just an end-to-end -end bit random function. The adversary a is also allowed to make p primitive queries to each of the primitive oracles. And after its communication, A should state which of the two worlds it was interacting with. If A cannot do so, then we can deduce that the given construction is a good correlation with us hash function. So an example of correlation with us hash function is proposed by Go et al. in 2020. The given construction makes one call to the underlying permutation and it's called the MMO construction. The main reason for this is because it resembles the idea of the classical MMO com compression function. So we can see that this construction achieves a typical Thursday type of security. Now, the next notion that I'm going to explain here is actually the circular variant of the correlation robustness notion. As before, the adversary gets Q construction queries to the construction oracle. This time in the real world, the construction query takes um, two inputs, where the second one is a single bit B. We can see that when B is equal to zero, then we are actually back to the case um, of correlation with fastness. And in the ideal world, the construction oracle is N plus one to n bits random function. As before, 
A is allowed to make P primitive queries to each of the primitive oracles. And after the communication, A should state which of the two worlds it was interacting with. If A cannot do so, then we can deduce that the given construction is a good circular correlation with our hash function. Goetel also showed that um, the previous MML construction can be modified such that the given construction is also secure against the circular notion. They did it by um, applying a linear automorphism on the input before applying the hash function on it. So this special function sigma needs to satisfy the following property where the um, where both sigma of uh, input x and uh, sigma x xor with x are all permutations. So we can see that by applying the sigma for um, on the input before applying the hash function, we are able to achieve the similar type of birthday type, birth birthday bound of security, but this time against the circular correlation with this notion. The last notion that I want to explain here is the triple circular correlation with process notion. But I'm going to explain the notion in the multi instance setting. So this time the adversary A gets Q construction queries to U of those oracles. This means that the adversary is allowed to make arbitrary amounts of um, construction queries per oracle as long as the number sum of the construction queries made in those U oracles together is equal to Q. So each construction oracle uses their independent randomness Ri, and we can see that each construction oracle takes now an additional input, the tweak T. So as can be seen from the slide, this tweak is actually processed inside the hash function itself. That means that we need a hash function that can handle the, the additional tweak. Now, um, in the ideal world, the, those U construction oracles are actually defined as n plus t plus 1 times n bit random functions. Again, that say A is allowed to make p primitive queries to each of the primitive oracles. And after communication, A should state which of the two worlds it was interacting with. If A cannot do so, then we can deduce that the given construction is a good t and triple circular correlation with our hash function. An example of a PCCR hash function was given by a Go et al. So we can see that um, this construction makes two calls two calls to the underlying permutation and is called the TMMO construction, the trickle MMO construction. We see that the construction achieves actually the same security bound as MMO construction before, but just because there is one additional trick input, there's one extra permutation call needed in order to handle this trick input and to achieve the same amount of security as before. However, unfortunately, in the follow-up work by the same authors, they show that the TMO construction doesn't provide enough security when the multi-user setting is considered. In the same work, they propose the following construction, which um, makes just one call to the underlying ideal, um, ideal cipher. Here, the trick input serves as a key to the ideal cipher. And the following security bound is achieved. We can see that the security bound depends on factor B. And B is actually equal to the number of construction queries per tweak. This number is usually a very small number in the um, case of OT extension schemes or double circuit. This improvement of the security leads, uh, makes the construction suitable for multi user setting. However, the problem is that um, the construction here makes a very strong assumption, namely that the underlying block cipher is the ideal cipher. 
So as I explained before, that's um, different notions are needed for different protocols and different applications. For example, the um, general correlation with us notion is for the same on the security of OT extension protocols. The circular notion is needed to prove the security of free XOR technique. Now the trickle notion is um, used for the malicious setting of OT extension protocols. In this work, we want to highlight the importance for the OT extension for the first time, and as already shown by Goetal, by using symmetric key building blocks, uh, we can get a huge performance improvement, which is significant for practical and um, which has significant practical impact on the efficiency of MPC. I still want to say something about the uh, security of a two-party computation protocol. So a typical two-party hybrid protocol that has access functionality with three interfaces. A sender S, a receiver R, and an adversary A. We, we do require that at least one of the two parties is uncorrupted. So as before in the real world, the adversary just runs a protocol. Now in the ideal world, it's interactive with the simulator S. After the communication, A should state which of the two worlds it was given. If A cannot do so, then we can deduce that the given protocol is a secure protocol. In our work, we also provide a special um, OT protocol. The main reason for this is because the hash function besides in this work is only secure for distinct message inputs at least um, in the most case. I will show that, um, that in one of the following slides that hash function can also be applied for arbitrary um, message inputs. But now keep in mind for this case, we um, first want to solve this problem by applying the, um, the hash function only on the distinct message inputs. Therefore, we pre um, present this um, protocol uh, so the protocol in this slide is for the corrupted receiver where in the initial phase, the sender just samples m pairs of messages while um, the receiver samples m um, times the x files. So uh, I'm not going to explain the protocol in the detail, but you can see that here the b files are generated for the receiver while based on this b files, we can generate those a files for, a files for the sender. The most important thing about this protocol is how um, those ciphertext C and R um, is, yeah, are generated. So you can see that the ciphertext is equal to the um, XOR of the plain text with the special FI ratio of the hash functions. So as we can, as I mentioned before, the TCR hash function is only secure for distinct message inputs. But we solve this problem by using universal hash function and by using the outputs of the universal hash function um, to, the to the message inputs of the TCR hash function, we are allowed to um, solve this um, distinct input message problem. Um, I still want to say a little bit about the security of the protocol. As I already mentioned before, we focus only on the sender security, which is um, for the corrupted receiver, and we keep ourselves to the ideal model security. And we can show that the only difference between the real and the ideal worlds is actually how these ciphertexts 1 minus xi um, are generated. So in the real world, this is the XOR of the message with the special evaluation of the TCR hash function. Now in the ideal world, it's just a lot of random bit string. So we can show that the sender security can be bonded by a PCR security of the hash function plus the extra term of Q squared times of epsilon. In order to satisfy this security, we need to fix a priori a random set of tweaks of size n. And to choose a universal hash function with a very small epsilon. For example, epsilon equal to, equal, equals to 1 over 2 to the power n. In that case, the sender security is dominated by, by a term um, 
square root n times p over q to the power n. Now, finally, to um, the constructions. So in this work, our main goal is actually to decide TCCR hash functions that can beat all previous state-of-the-art constructions, both in terms of efficiency and security. We can do that by um, using public permutations and finite field multiplications. The main reason that we use permutations is because public permutations are um, much simpler objects than block ciphers. That means the assumption that the underlying permutations are ideal is weaker than the assumptions that um, the underlying block cipher is ideal. Our first contribution, actually our first construction is the, one, the following one call construction. This construction uh, looks very similar to the MMO construction, but we can see that while the MMO construction is insecure in the case of um, the trick and the trick post circular uh, correlation robustness notion, our construction does provide uh, uh, this typical birthday type of security against the TCCR notion. The main reason is because instead of um, using the input message, we use a um, message multiplied with the tweak T. By this small modification, we, um, our construction improve, improve the previous TMMO, TMMO construction, which is based on two permutation calls. Here, we just need one permutation call and one finite field multiplication. I still want to say something about this security bound achieved here. So we can see that the first term depends on PQ, while the second term is only um, depends on Q. So the first term is actually can be seen as the correlation of a construction query with the primitive query in the following form. Well, the second Q squared term is actually the probability that a collision happens between two construction queries of the following form. So finally, we come to our main contribution of this work, our two cause construction, the fit forward permutation to each permutation construction, also called the FPDP construction. So as you can see, that this construction looks very similar to the, um, to the TMMO construction as before. But the difference is that um, for TMMO, they fit forward the outputs of the first permutation, while here we fit forward the input. We can see that this small modification leads to a big improvement in the security bound. Now the second, um, second term doesn't really change so much, the first term is really improved for a square root of Q factor. Here, the factor B is again uh, the number of construction queries per same tweak, which is a very small number for OT and Kafka circuit. In order to achieve this security, we need to choose the tweaks for nice combinatorial subsets, for example, a random subset, as mentioned in, in the case of OT extension protocols that we provide. We prove the security for distinct and uniform input messages, but even in the case for arbitrary input message, we are all able to get the same amount of security as long as we replace the input M by an, a multiplication of the input with the input tweak. So by introducing one extra finite field multiplication, this construction achieves the same and security bound for arbitrary input message. So we prove the security both for two independent permutations, so for the case when pi one is an independent of pi two, and for the case when pi one is equal, uh, is equal to pi two. For both cases, the construction achieved the security bound provided in this slide. But this improvement of square root Q in the first term the given construction is sufficient for a um, multi user setting. The main reason for that is because P is usually a very large number. So the first term will usually be the dominant and the dominant term. And then the improvements of square root Q uh, make it sufficient um, in the, for the multi user security. 
I still want to say something about the technical overview of this construction. So how we can get those security bonds. So instead of um, looking at how we can prove the security, it's better to see how we can break the construction. So this construction can be broken when we can find uh, this type of chain, which is equal to the collision of a construction query and, and the primitive query to the first permutation and the primitive query to the second permutation that satisfy the following two equations. The construction can also be broken if we can find this type of double chain. So which is again the collision between the construction query with the primitive query to the first permutation and the primitive query to the second permutation that satisfy the following two equations. We can also break the construction by finding one of um, this type of merging chains, which can be seen as the collision between two construction queries and two primitive queries to the first permutation that satisfy the following three equations. And the probability that the first two um, type of types of chains happens can be bounded by some capture theorems, which are presented in the previous work. And the probability that uh, the merging chain happens can be bounded by a new type of um, balls into Bing's lemmas, uh, which is presented in this work. So finally, um, for conclusion, in this work, we provide several new results where we um, present concrete security treatment for obvious, for obvious transfer extension schemes. And we also present uh, one called TCCR hash function that's achieved a typical birthday type of security. We also present a two call construction and um, two call TCCR construction called FPTP, which is our main contribution that uh, improves the first term of those typical person types of security by a, a factor of square root of Q. For future research, it will be interesting to look at whether we can improve the second term in the FPTP security bond, for example, by improving this term to something in um, like q to the power 3 divided by q to the power 2 n. It will also be interesting to uh, try to formalize the limitation of the tweak sets used in FPTP construction. One extra direction for the future work is to extend FPTP construction to multiple runs and see how the security will increase with the number of um, runs. So this is the end of my presentation. I want to thank you for your attention.